2019's hit in the game A Short Hike has a cute and minimalistic dialogue system, which is well suited for games with limited amounts of dialogue. Let's recreate this complete with dynamic letter typing and variable text box heights. Let's go do. We will need to create two things, a text box and a dialogue manager. A text box is concerned with displaying a single line of text, one letter at a time, and inside an appropriately sized box. The dialogue manager is concerned with whole sequences of text boxes that create a single dialogue. It creates and destroys text boxes and manages when the player is able to advance to the next line. To start, I'm making the text box background in a sprite, which is actually a 3x3 image of 4 corners, 4 edges and the center of the text box. Each segment is 16x16 16 pixels, so the total image is 48x48 48 pixels. Once we have that imported into Godot, we can go ahead and create a new scene which we will name text box, and the root node is going to be a margin container. Now we will add a 9-patch rect node to the text box, which is going to act as a background. We're using a 9-patch rect instead of a different node for our background, because 9-patch rect actually doesn't scale the texture when we resize it, but it tiles it, so that our corners and our sides are always the same, proportionally, and the middle of our texture fills up the entire rect, which is perfect for text boxes. We're gonna add a texture to the 9-patch rect, and we have to go down and click on this Edit Region button. This will open up a new window and we see our texture here and we can drag this to select it. But what we should do is go up to snap mode and select grid snap. Then set up our step to be 16 pixels on the X and Y. Then we can drag the dashed lines so they intersect our texture. And we want to drag each one in a little bit so the texture is split up into 9 different patches. Once we have done that we can hit the close button. Now if we resize our text box, we can see the 9-patch rect is resized with it, but it's not scaled, it's actually tiled. Next we will add another margin container inside our text box, and inside that margin container we're gonna add our label. And there's a couple things we have to set up in the labels inspector. Vertical alignment needs to be set to center. Then down in theme overrides, we can set our font under fonts. I actually have a font prepared, so I'm just gonna drag it in. And above it we have colors. We will click font color, which will apply this default black color to our font. Now we can try writing some example text at the top of the inspector, and everything looks good except for the margins on the left and right sides of the text. To fix that we will go to labels parent margin container, and in team overrides, constants, we will add a margin left, right, top and bottom, with a value of 8. Now it's important that we actually delete the text from the label before starting the game because otherwise it's not gonna work right. There's just one more node we need and that's a timer and we're gonna name it letter display timer and go into the inspector and set one shot which is very important. Let's go ahead and add a script to our text box. First we need to get our label and timer from the scene so on ready war label and on ready war timer. Then we're gonna set up a constant max width, which I'm gonna set to 256, which means our text box cannot be wider than 256 pixels. Then we need a text variable which will start as an empty string, and a letter index variable which we will use to display text letter by letter and it's gonna start at zero. Next we will set up our time variables, which will actually tell how much seconds is gonna pass between each character of our text being displayed. So our letter time is going to be 0.03 seconds, our space time is going to be 0.06 and punctuation time 0.2 seconds. And we're also going to need a signal which we will call finished displaying so our text box can tell the dialog manager when it's done. We will define a function called display text, which will take a parameter called text to display of type string. We'll assign text to display to our text variable. We're also gonna put text to display into the label, so label.text equals text to display. So our label expands to its full width with the text, so we can calculate the width and the height of the text box after all the text is displayed. We have to await the text box resized signal because it's being adjusted according to the size of our label. Then we will write custom minimum size.txt to set up the minimum x size of our container and it's gonna be a minimum from current size and our max width. Then we're gonna check if our current x size is more than max width, in which case we want the label's text to go into a new line. So we'll write label.autowrap mode, 
equals text server dot auto wrap word. This will force the labels text to go into a new line and it will force our text box to resize again. It's actually gonna resize the X first, so we have to await for that. And then it's gonna resize the Y, so we have to await for that separately. Then we're gonna write custom minimum size dot Y equals size dot Y. So this is our new minimum Y size. Now that our text box has expanded vertically as well. Then we're gonna position our text box by writing global position dot X minus equals size dot X over two, which will actually center it on the X axis and global position dot y minus equals size dot y plus 24 just so it's a little bit above the speaker then we're gonna set the labels text back to an empty string and we're gonna call display letter which we will implement right now display letter is going to add a single character to our labels text so to do that we'll write label dot text plus equals text and index it by letter index then we will increment letter index by one and check if letter index is more or equal to text.length, in which case we will emit our finished displaying signal and return from this function because we don't want to do anymore. But if there is still characters to display, we're going to do that with a timer. And to determine which time we're going to use, we're going to use match text and index it by letter index. In the case it's an exclamation point, a period, a comma or a question mark, we're going to call timer.start with punctuation time. In case the character is a space, we're gonna set timer.start with our space time. And in any other case, so this underscore, we're gonna call timer.start letter time. Now we're done with the script, but we have to connect our timer's timeout signal by clicking on it and going into the node tab, signals, and double clicking on timeout, then pressing connect. When the timer times out, we just want to call our display letter function to display another letter and set up another timer. And that's it for the text box, but now we have to create our dialog manager. Dialog manager is a singleton, so I'm creating it in my singletons folder. To make it a singleton, we have to make it auto loaded. So we go up to project, project settings, auto load, and then in the path, we will choose our dialog manager and press add. Now our dialog manager script can be accessed from any script in our game. Let's go write that script now. First we need a reference to our text box scene. So we'll write on ready var text box scene equals preload and then the path to the text box scene. Then we're gonna define a dialog lines variable of type array string and initialize it to an empty array. We're also gonna define a current line index and similarly to our text box, it's gonna be used to show different lines one at a time. Initialize that at zero. Then we need var text box and var text box position, which will be empty for now. And we'll need this dialog active, which will start at false, and also can advance line, which will also start at false. We're gonna define a function called start dialog, which takes a position parameter of vector two and lines parameter, which is an array of strings. Immediately, we're gonna check if dialog is active. And if it is, we're gonna return out of this function because we don't wanna start another dialog if one is already active. Then we're gonna save the lines parameter to our dialog lines variable and our position parameter to our text box position variable. And we'll call show text box, a function we haven't defined yet. At the end, we're just gonna call is dialog active equals true to set the dialog to active. Let's define the show text box function. At the start, we're gonna create a new text box by calling textboxscene.instantiate and saving that into our text box variable. Then we will connect the finish displaying signal from the text box and we will connect it to a function called on text box finish displaying, which we haven't implemented yet. We're gonna call get child and pass in the text box to actually insert the text box into the game. Then we have to call textbox.globalPosition and assign it text box position to place it at the appropriate spot and then call textbox.displayText and pass in the dialog lines at current line index. So the first line of our dialog lines. And at the end set can advance line to false. Now let's implement the on text box finish displaying function, which will only have one line and that's calling can advance line equals true. So when the text box finishes displaying, we can advance to the next line. Last thing we need to do is actually implement advancing to the next line and we're gonna do that in the unhandled input function. 
we're gonna check if event is action pressed advanced dialog which I set to space and you can set that in the input manager and is dialog active and can advanced line is true if so we're gonna queue free our text box we're gonna increase the current line index by one we have to check if current line index is more or equal to the dialog lines dot size if it is that means we're done with our dialog so we're gonna set is dialog active to false we're gonna reset the current line index back to zero and we will return out of this function. But if it's not, we're gonna show the next text box by calling show text box. And that's it, we're done with our dialog manager. Now to use it, you can go to any script you want. I have my test guy script here for my NPC. I have his lines up at the top and you can see here I'm calling dialog manager dot start dialog and I'm passing in his global position and I'm passing in the lines as well. The point is you can access dialog manager from any script so any script can start the dialog. And that's the basics of our text box. Since this video is already pretty long, I'm gonna cut it there. But in the next one, I'm gonna show you how to add sounds to the NPCs while they talk, sorta of like in Animal Crossing or some RPGs from the past, and some other nifty stuff for the text box, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching.